G'day, welcome to the show. Uh, Adam and I are standing here on the ground in front of the San Diego Convention Center where Comic Con International 2013 has just this second finished. Actually, it finished about 20 minutes ago. Uh, four and a half days of lining up panels, uh, freebies, and frankly, costumes. Um, do you have? Yeah. A, did you have a favorite? Look, you know, funnily enough, I think my favorite was the Predator at the Predator booth, yeah. uh, but that was kind of a professional one. Uh, my favorite of the um, just made ones was that dude who he was he was wearing a horse so it looked like he was riding a horse but when he moved his legs the horse's legs moved I suddenly can't I can't think of a favorite all of a sudden I've, no. j- because there's just so many amazing costumes and one of the weird themes of this year was mm. uh, it's a superhero but steampunk style yeah or you know uh, yeah. a, a famous character but a zombie version of same yeah my what I tried to do was try to collect. Uh, different Darth Vaders, yeah. and so uh, so I think I got Elvis Darth Vader. Yeah. I think I got Slutty Darth Vader. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I got Fat Batman this year, though. There were a few Fat Batmans. Yeah. Okay, we're going to invite someone else out to talk to us and tell us about their Comic Con experience. It's our regular guest, Lady Geek Leah Collins. Come over. Hello, how are you? Oh, good, thanks. Good. All right, now um, I'm going to ask highlights. What was the highlight of your convention? Highlights. Uh, Walking Dead panel was very good. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah, cool. And you also saw uh, one of the biggest panels that people were anticipating. You went and saw the X-Files 20th anniversary or yeah. 25th anniversary panel? It was 20th anniversary. Uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, everyone on there was a bit uh, professional. I haven't gone to the Firefly panel the year before, which was highly emotive and emotional and nostalgic. The X-Files people, there was uh, about six writers and Chris Carter, of course, and uh, David and Gillian came out and... Uh, Everyone's I like that you're on first name basis with them. Oh yeah, you know David Duchovny. Who isn't? You know? Uh, yeah. Well, I, uh, sorry. Well, I have the question I want to ask, and I think I asked this of you the other night. And um, I just want your opinion. Like, I want first impressions because the chemistry between David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson is obviously still there. Um, what? What were they palling around? What were they? Were they joking around? Don't don't it? don't tiptoe around. It. Ask your question. All right. Do you reckon David Duchovny has slept with Gillian Anderson? Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Yeah, they have a lot of chemistry and an intimacy between them that just, it it just screams that they would have just, maybe once, once. maybe it slipped. For research. I just want to make it clear that uh, Leah Collins' opinion on this matter is uh, not the opinion of the show, it's her own personal opinion. (laughs) And so if anyone wants to sue anyone for defamation, it's not these guys. We've got no money. Okay, so I want to ask, how long did you have to wait in line to see the X-Files panel? Well, I was actually lucky. I only had to line up at about 3.30 a.m., whereas uh, a lot of people were there from about 7 p.m. the day before. Uh, And that's one thing I've noticed about this con. Uh, The camping out uh, under the tents on the grass to get into Hall H, Ballroom 20, was out of control this year. I I think it was just starting last year, but this year it was absolutely out of control. People were, you know, they had their sleeping bags, they had chairs, they were stocked up with food and people were camping from, as I said, 7pm, nearly every, well pretty much every night and it was, it was getting a bit out of control. I don't know if they should actually police that somehow because it's just getting... I, I camped out for Hall H on the Saturday night to get into the big movie announcement premiere things, uh, which we'll talk about on another segment, but uh, I started camping at midnight uh, there were dudes there. There was a dude there who actually had a tent. There was like a three-person tent that he'd set up. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little graphic to just show you just where the line went. Uh, when one of the line people uh, came up and was waking us up to see to get us to kind of bunch up, uh, I asked her how long the line was, and I don't know whether she was exaggerating, but she said five miles. Five miles of people waiting to get in to see some actors talk about their movies. That's right. Yeah. And that is the wonderful thing about Comic Con, really. Yeah. I think I waited for, uh, the longest I was for about two hours. Right. For something. Yeah. But I'm not very hardcore. Not, not very hardcore at all. By the t- from when I uh, started lining up at midnight uh, to when I got into Hall H, it was nine and a half hours sleeping overnight. Yeah. But I got in and saw some <laughs> awesome shit, so. Uh, I enjoyed the fact that I went to the um, Superman 75th anniversary panel. You know, it was a pretty star-studded panel already. You had people who done the voice of Superman, Tim Daly, and uh, had various actors from the new movie as well as various writers from down the ages, and Jack Larson, who played Jimmy Olsen in the 1950s TV show. And then their extra special guest that they just announced right at the last minute who came out, Henry Cavill. 
I just you know, up. just Superman, whatever. Yeah. He's just there, you yeah. know. And the great thing about that was that it was a, a reasonably small room that they were in. So it was a reasonably, because it's a comic book panel, it's always slightly geekier and yeah. possibly less attended. Um, and so, you know, it was just Henry Cavill just over there, you know, just being, you know, Hanging dreamy. Yeah, yeah, being dreamy over there, especially with his British accent. All right, so uh, the final thing I want to ask both of you yeah. is you're a two-time veteran. You're a four-time veteran now yeah. of Comic-Con. Um, what advice do you have to people who might be thinking of coming in the future, if indeed they can get a ticket? Adam? Uh, that's a good question. I would suggest to just pick what you want. Like, have a look at the schedule and really be decisive about what you want so that you can get into everything you want. Because if you want to get into a panel, more than likely you might have to sit through one or two panels before that to see what you... But the good thing about that is you will probably sit through a panel that you ended up not would have never gone to well we went to the teen titans go panel yeah. for the purposes of seeing the batman panel that was on after it um and the teen titans panel was much better in the end and that was just you know randomly Leah, my advice would be to read up on everything i notice a lot of people just because you're you're standing next to people all day so you do eavesdrop on people's conversations a lot people are so ignorant of what's going on yeah. and you just think that they would have much more fun and it would go so much more smoothly for them if they knew what was happening, where it was happening and also read blogs to, to, that say if you want to get into Hall H you have to line up at this time. It's, people are blogging and tweeting constantly mm. so the information is there. Just, yep. you, really, you just need to read up and then you'll, you'll be fine. The only thing I would say um, would be that if you were going to come to Comic-Con, you have to sort of accept the fact that there will be things you would like to see that you will not see. Yeah. You know, um, like there will be a panel that you want to get into that you just won't get into, or there'll be a piece of uh, free stuff that you want that you can't get, or there'll be a toy you want to buy and you can't get it, all this sort of thing. The, Comic-Con is actually riddled with disappointment in that sense, <laughs> but there's so much else going on that it doesn't really matter. No. Uh, that there'll be something else. Yeah. Uh, and something maybe even surprising mm. that you didn't expect? But I actually think that if you really want to do something or see something like with a huge passion, it, as long as you put the effort in, like the huge effort in, mm. you, it'll happen. Every, I saw everything that I needed to see and that meant that I had to go from a night out drinking straight uh, to have a shower after that straight to line up. Uh, and, you know, that was an effort and I had to sit there with a hangover waiting in line. But uh, it, it, you know... That's a sacrifice that you, I had to make. You had a shower? That You are the only one in Comic-Con who had a shower. <laughs> it smells funky in there yeah. right now. Yeah, it was, it was a long and warm weekend in that sense. <laughs> All right, well, great. Um, thank you very much, uh, Leah, for giving us your thoughts on Comic-Con 2013. I think we can all say that we had a, a great time. Yeah, um, you know, that's the biggest takeaway from this is that uh, the reason why he's twice, yep. four times, uh, yep. that it's an amazing experience and you should definitely, if you get the opportunity, come along to Nerd Mecca. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you again with another segment on Comic-Con shortly.